I've got a review for you on the channel here today, and that is the Hoyt Barebow Weight Kit. It's very exciting and something I definitely want to take a closer look at, and I'll give you some details as to how it actually feels on the bow if it does actually kill vibration like it says it does. Before I get into the video, I want to thank Ryan for sending me this Hoyt Barebo weight kit. I guess he grabbed it in Vegas on sale and sent it here for me to review. And if you're interested in this Hoyt Barebo weight kit system and anything else that I'm using in this video, I will have links in the description below where you can grab one of these. And I'll put a card at the top up there to Lancaster Archery Supply. And uh, it really helps this channel out if you click that before you shop there because those are affiliate links. So what's interesting about this weight is it comes in three different sizes. You can run it as a 20, 30, or 40 ounce weight. So it's essentially three weights in one because you just change a ring on the outside of the actual weight itself, which is cool. However, after thinking about it a little bit more, you don't really get three weights because you can only use one on its own, right? You only have one center section and then three rings on the outside. There's also vibration dampening media on the inside of the weight. And we'll see if we can get it open and take a look at it and see what it actually is. And then uh, we'll get outside and shoot it. And I'll tell you how it actually feels. Does it change balance enough to warrant it as far as the slider is concerned? And will it fit through a bare bow ring? I've got that green one 3D printed there. It's a little undersized. I printed it that way on purpose just to make sure when I go to a tournament, I do in fact pass equipment inspection. So we'll open this up first and see what we got. So it comes, it comes in a very nice kit. The first thing that I did actually notice when I was looking at this package, full disclosure, is that it says engineered in the USA here on the bottom, right? And then if you look on the bottom over here, it actually says engineered in the USA, made in China. So these are made not in the US. It's unfortunate in my opinion, because I really like that Hoyt is an American company and does American products, but not on this particular piece here. The actual carrying case is excellent. It's a nice zippered case. I don't really take my bare bow weight off, so for me, it's a bit excessive, although it is a very, very nice way to present what actually is in here, and it's very nice looking. So what we've got here is the main center section with the 20 ounce ring, the 30 ounce ring, and the 40 ounce ring. And then we've got the hardware here as well. So I think it just screws on and off. The weight, it's actually the machine quality on this, pretty good. Surface finish on it is nice. I'm assuming this 20 ounce ring is probably aluminum and it's anodized, that's why it's black. But it looks very sharp. We'll check it as I pull it apart. And you can see here this reliefed area here with the three bolts is holding this actual plate on the back because the vibration dampened media is on the inside of there. And so when you go to actually pull the weight apart, you just unscrew this ring, this collar. Yeah, so that is in fact aluminum. That's why it's black. And then feels like these are stainless rings in the heavier variants. So, as you can see, as it gets heavier, they also get bigger around. And they look quite good. Like I said, the surface finish on them, pretty excellent. They look, look great. So to swap it out, you would in theory just take one ring off, throw another ring on, and you can go up 10 ounces at a time. They thread together all right. It's got a nice stop. And of course, now that I put it together, I'm not gonna get it apart. So the center section here is threaded, obviously, because it's going to receive the outer ring. I would never personally ever run this on its own without an outer ring because the moment you ding these threads on anything, you're not getting those threaded collars back on. So if you're not able to shoot a 20 ounce bare bow weight, I would definitely not take the aluminum ring off. It doesn't weigh very much anyway, 
So I wouldn't really even worry about that, but just be careful. Make sure you're not banging on these threads. You don't want them to fail. Now, what is nice about this actual weight is this slot. You know, most standard barebow weights are mounted in the center, so you can't shift the weight left and right to affect the balance. This has a slot, so you can affect that type of balance, and you can also hang it down and shift the weight all around in many different areas and many different ways. That way you can make sure the uh, bow itself passes through the bare bow ring. Plus it allows you to change that balance of the bow, possibly fixing some canting issues or some aiming issues. And we'll put that to the test today and see how much of a difference it actually makes. I think what I wanna do is open this up. See, they did use thread locker. Doesn't feel like red. No, they used red. At least on that one, it wasn't very hard. We'll see if I can get all three of these apart without breaking anything. That'd be great. Yeah, no problem. So these are thread locked, which is nice. They used red, but it doesn't feel very permanent to me. So what the package says, I believe, I don't know if the package says it or just the actual uh, website itself. It says it's packed with Vibration dampening micro spherules, which to me sounds exactly like the old literature uh, as far as the marketing material for the ACE Easton stabilizers. And what it was was essentially glass beads inside the stabilizer in a capsule. So I'm wondering if Hoyt's using the same thing. We'll find out. Let's try to open this up without tipping it because I don't want to dump out what's in there because we want to be able to actually shoot this thing. Yep, it's exactly what it is. That vibration dampening media in there. I don't know if you can see it. It's powdery, it's white. I don't know if you can see it there. So it's just basically it's very, very, very fine glass beads. So this is essentially sandblasting media, I think. Maybe it's a little more advanced, I don't know. But it sure to me looks like fairly standard sandblasting media that you would use inside of like a blast cabinet to blast something before you were to have it coated, whether that be Cerakoted or uh, anodized or all sorts of different things. So that's what your vibration dampening media is. I thought it would be this because of the actual verbiage they used, vibration dampening micro spherules. And that's exactly the way they wrote it in the ACE stabilizer uh, when Easton sold that. Did make a bit of a difference. Uh, and supposedly, I believe Hoyt says that this reduces the vibration by 10%. So you can see there's some residue from the actual Loctite plus the actual bit of uh, micro spherules there. Now that 10% vibration reduction claim, I'd really like to know the test data, the test configurations. Is that compared to no weight at all on the bow? Or is that compared to the exact same mass weight of a bow that doesn't have vibration dampening on it? Um, those things are interesting to me to know because then I can actually have some quantifiable data, not actual data or not a claim because there is no data. I haven't seen any sort of vibration analysis posted on that and I would be interested to see it if anyone out there has it or has seen it. So if you have, maybe there's seminars that they've talked about it or something like that, post in the comments below if you have any of that or have seen any of it. You can hear the, the glass balls exploding because some of them were down in there in the seams. Just want to make sure it's nice and tight. So I'm going to put the aluminum collar back on just to protect the threads as I put things back together in case I drop the thing. And the hardware that came with it's a standard cap head bolt and then two different washers. One is brass and one is regular zinc coated steel. I would assume the brass is to probably help lock everything in place. So I'm gonna put the brass under the steel like so and then put it through the weight. 
I don't know if that's the way you're supposed to do it. There was no instructions with anything. So I'm assuming that's how it goes together. And uh, it looks good. It looks really nice on the bow itself. So you can see that slot is there. And so I could shift it all the way to the left and in theory, make the bow wanna, yeah, so it does turn a little bit this direction. Now that is only with the light ring. Be careful, I don't want anybody to cross thread anything. I feel like it would be pretty easy to do if I wasn't paying attention. So with the 40 ouncer, it really wants to cant it to the left. So in theory, this should really affect the actual balance of the bow. Grab my bare bow ring. And I mean, at least here on the GMX 3 Series, even with the biggest ring all the way over to the left, it still passes through it just fine. And you can also adjust it, drop it down, just many different angles and adjust the slide. If you don't know what you're doing here, you're better off just starting with it in the very center. It'll keep it in a nice spot for you that it's evenly balanced and it won't be too confusing. I can't tell you how many people that I see with like say the Yoast uh, Barabo weight that is eccentric that allows you to also shift the weight left and right. They don't even realize that it's off center. Um, I, I would say of the, say, 10 people that I've worked with that has a Yoast barebow weight, one had it shifted off center on purpose. All of them had it off, shifted off center, every single person, but only one of them did it on purpose. All the rest had no idea that it was even off center. So it can get you into a lot of trouble, the eccentric mounts and that, if you don't know that you even are trying to affect the balance because it genuinely does and can affect the balance, and we'll see how much as we put this bow through the tests. Now that everything is together, well, I sliced myself during this a lot, actually. I don't know if I did it while I was taking it apart. That is entirely possible. But as you can see, I filleted my palm a bit and my finger there. So be careful. Be careful as you're taking this thing apart. I'm betting there's a few burrs or very, very, very sharp edges here on the threaded section. So when you take it apart to swap your rings, be really careful. Because I'm sure there's some knife-like, yeah, there's some very sharp edges where they did the chamfers next to the threads the threaded areas and it's like a knife in some spots so be very careful when you're swapping the rings and don't grab a hold on the outside of the threads yeah otherwise uh, you'll end up like me so what I'm gonna do is I guess I'm gonna shoot a few arrows and just kind of get comfortable with the bow itself I haven't shot this in a long time uh, actually I just put it back together for this video as a bare bow because I was shooting it as a recurve before We'll start with the 20 ounce weight. I did find a standard brass weight that has no vibration dampening at all, and it weighs 24.8 ounces. So I'll probably swap out between the 20 and 30 ounce Hoyt Barebo weight and compare it to that solid weight when I'm ready. And then I'll start shifting it around and see how much of a difference it actually makes in regards to aiming and balance. So this bow isn't optimized as far as tune is concerned, but I feel like it would be a very good uh, representation as far as how most people come to me with a bare bow. Uh, it's not always perfectly tuned and it's off just a little bit. The basic parameters are set like tiller and brace height and alignment and things like that, but the bear shaft may not be perfect and it's definitely going to be a little bit off here and I'll shoot one just to see, just in case. Now the bow sits pretty good. I am using the Arcor Bear Bow Grip that I've made, and it's uh, 
you know, optimized for me as far as cant is concerned. So the bow sits nice and well, nice and level as is with the weight in the center. And I don't notice that I need to shift stuff, but we'll play with that in a minute. So overall, it feels very standard. Nothing shocking here yet. So let's play with the uh, actual shifting of the weight. I'm gonna shift it all the way to the left as far as I can. That's away from the sight window side of the bow. Now you can see with that weight all the way to the left, the bow just naturally wants to cant a bit to that left side. This should in theory also affect the way the bow aims. Say if you're always aiming in the middle and then the, the, um, the arrow tip moves to the right and it always wants to go to the right and you're fighting it to keep it to the left, that's when shifting the weight to the left might be a good idea. It'll help affect that balance and settle down your aim a bit. I definitely felt it after the shot, as far as the reaction. The bow moved heavily to the left upon release. I mean, the bow sits vertical for me. Uh, if I check it, if I shift it the other way. So as far as shifting it the other way, you gotta turn it around like this, right? So it shifts to the right. I don't think many people will put it in this configuration, unless you're left-handed, um, but most right-handed shooters will have it towards the left. It definitely sits a little bit towards the right as far as the angle is concerned. And like I said, upon release, I can feel the bow really wanting to turn towards the right, just like it did turning towards the left with it shifted to the left. I can definitely tell that the uh, bow itself is wanting to cant to the right. Wouldn't necessarily say it's, say it's wanting to aim to the right. Uh, and I did just shoot a bear shaft in case you're curious. It is basically in the group. But if I was back at 30, it'd be a bit on the stiff side. Um, but it's good enough for 20 yards. So definitely shifting it left and right does make a bit of a difference. I do not like the reaction of the bow when it is shifted far to the left or to the right. I don't like the bow to want to essentially turn upon release. So what I'm noticing with the bow like this, with the weight shifted all the way to the right, is when I go to actually release the bow, it turns like that, where it's turning towards that weight side. And if I have the weight to the left, it's turning like this. So, I mean, I don't like that reaction because I've never had that happen on a recurve. I've never had the bow want to turn either direction. I want the bow to deliver the arrow straight and then fall. You know, it can, it can cant ever so slightly. That's not too big of a deal. And on recurve, I can adjust the weight to make it aim differently. And I feel like Possibly uh, just shifting it that far, the full amount is too much and maybe that's why I'm not liking it. So possibly starting with it in this down configuration like that and then angling it ever so slightly to affect the balance might be a safer idea. So I'm gonna angle it down just to get a bit more clearance for my hand because it kind of gets in the way because it's so big in diameter for my fingers. I just don't really like it. So I'm gonna shift it down, go from there. So I feel like, you know, as a guy, I don't know about females, but with the standard bow here, this is a good starting point, 20 ounces of mass weight. It's, it's really manageable. Uh, you can go more than this, but I don't even really know if more than this is even super necessary. As far as balance is concerned, it feels pretty good. And I think that, um, you get, you get a bow that doesn't move too much and you pay too much attention to the aiming pattern and they can get you in trouble, especially in regards to target panic. I definitely like it that way. So it does affect the way it feels. 
I like the plumb bob feeling where it's pulling the bow vertically straight. Personally, I like that. I also like putting weights in the bottom pocket because it uh, helps just kind of pull the bow more vertically straight. And it feels a lot more stable to me with a little bit less mass weight. This first stainless one on, which is now 30 ounces of total weight. Sorry about the lighting out here. It's really, really hard with all these shadows. I mean, it's starting to get heavier, for sure. I do like this ability though. Not necessarily being able to change the uh, balance of the bow or where the actual slotted portion is angled towards, but being able to quickly change the mass weight is pretty neat. It's just a very uh, interesting feature that I haven't seen anywhere else. Now it's really staying nice and straight. It's got a little bit forward balance to it. Start to make the bow sound a little bit different. You know, it's fine. It's manageable. It's just more mass weight, so it's not making too much of a difference in my opinion. I mean, it sits fine. The balance is nice. The reaction after the shot is good. I don't have it too far to the right or to the left. Nope, that ring came loose as you could hear. So, slam it, nope, that won't even get it. I don't know if anyone out there is having any issues with it vibrating loose. Now that I've tightened it, I'm turning the whole weight itself. So, probably gotta make sure it's really, really tight to begin with and then make sure your slot is set how it's supposed to be because now as I was trying to take the weight off, you can see how it's shifted a lot to the left. So now I have the camera positioned from behind me so that way hopefully you get a similar sound profile that I hear when I'm shooting because obviously from different locations, the bow sounds different and uh, hopefully I'll be able to convey to you if I hear or feel anything different. I guess really quick, I want to compare the aluminum weight to this one just to make sure I don't feel any difference there. I don't recall feeling any difference. I did feel a little bit more dampening with the 40 ounce weight. Maybe a little bit more string oscillation. At least on that particular shot. Wasn't the best shot either. Mm, it's about the same. I, I really don't feel much difference at all between the 20 and 30 ounce weight. Maybe, maybe the slightest, smallest of differences. Without accelerometers, I really don't see being able to feel the difference between or be able to articulate the difference between a 20 and 30 ounce weight. And then what I am comparing this to is this Thunderstruck Archery bare bow weight that is brass. There is no dampener in it. It does have an eccentric mount for the actual weight, so that way you can shift it left and right as well. But I'm just gonna run it straight down as I was with the Hoyt weight. Okay, so you can see <clears throat> it's here on the bottom angled straight down much smaller package it's a little bit longer of course it still does fit through the barebow ring i have checked that before and the balance is pretty similar to the uh, 20 ounce definitely not as good as the 40 ounce as far as the amount of angle forward and left and right is basically dead vertical
It's definitely audibly a small amount louder. Yeah, I definitely hear a little bit more string oscillation. I hear the string bouncing off the limbs a small amount more. Overall, as far as what I, I hear way more than I feel, I think. I would say that because I'm hearing a difference, I'm feeling more of a difference than if I didn't hear anything because you know, it tricks the brain. If you hear something that's louder versus not, it'll feel different. Let me shoot one more. Yeah, I don't, I really don't think I feel much different other than maybe a tiny amount of string oscillation difference basically the same amount of difference between the 30 to 20 ounce Hoyt weight but then going from the 30 to 40 ounce I felt even more difference before I say for sure I want to shoot the Thunderstruck one once more and then the Hoyt one once more Got one more bear shaft to try. I'm, I really can't tell much of a difference as far as vibration is concerned. It is so close. I would say maybe I feel a difference. I don't know what the actual number would be, but I feel like Maybe if the Hoyt barebow weight was exactly 4.8 ounces heavier to match the Thunderstruck, then I would feel a little bit more difference. I hear a difference. I can hear a difference in the limbs. I can hear a difference in the actual serving buzzing off the limb surface itself. And I feel like I could probably get that to go away in general with some uh, brace height tuning or some tiller tuning and an overall better tune on the bow probably. Um, so would it feel much different at a very high end uh, tune as far as the bow being perfect? I don't know. It actually might make more of a difference, um, but I really, really don't know. So I think that the vibration dampening does make a little bit of a difference. It's really not much of a difference in my opinion. Uh, the price point is definitely a little bit more pricey as far as a bare bow weight is concerned. You do get three different weights though right essentially you get three weights in one a 20 a 30 and a 40 ounce you can't use all three of them at the same time so that is the downfall of the system itself but it is a good idea to be able to hopefully not change your balance a terrible amount and just be able to essentially quick change some uh, weights without needing tools that's really nice the uh, ability to shift it and move it is very nice but it can get you in trouble if you don't know what you're doing and aren't making sure that the actual weight is centered correctly i've had one person come to me that had a hoyt uh, bare bow weight and they were having a hard time getting the bow actually or the the weight itself straight relative to the actual bow according to what they thought was straight was not what i thought was straight and it's very difficult without putting that that bolt in the very dead center of the weight itself but then it shifts it up so much in the way with your hand to where I'm not really a huge fan of it in, in that regard at least. Overall the piece itself the quality is quite high. I'm a bit disappointed that it is manufactured in China even though it's coming from Hoyt but you know if you are going to play with it and take it apart just be careful of the actual threads on the outside diameter of the main section. They are very very sharp the edges are very very sharp now, like I said, if you are interested in checking out this Hoyt Barebow weight system or any of the other products that I have used on the bow, including the precision tiller bolts here that we do sell on my website, jcominci.com, I will have, again, links in the description below to everything I used in this video. And if you wouldn't mind, please do hit that subscription button and the notification bell down below. It'll notify you when I upload new content. I'm finally back to producing content, and I'm going to try to do it regularly like I used to in the past two times a week. I don't know if I'll stick to a specific schedule, a specific days of the week, but I'm gonna try to at least get you a video a week out there. I do lots of equipment reviews, I do form stuff, technical stuff, mental things, all sorts of various different stuff to help make you a better archer, and I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Hey, if you like this video, please do consider sharing it. Genuinely, that helps this channel grow. I don't operate any other social media at the moment, and I rely on you to help spread the word about the channel. Also, if you wouldn't mind, please do consider supporting this channel. There's many different links in the description below. I produce all these videos for archers around the world to enjoy for free. So even just clicking those affiliate links and going about your normal shopping helps this channel out, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Thanks to those who do support this channel. I can't thank you enough. Without you, I wouldn't be able to produce this content, at least not to this level. So thanks.